believe it or not it is actually possible to get over 2000 or sometimes 2500 gems in a single day for free in rise of kingdoms but you have to know exactly what to do and you also need to get a little bit lucky at the right time now over the past few weeks i've made a couple of different videos talking about gems i made a video talking about the best way to buy gems like literally what is the best value of purchasing in rise of kingdoms and i also made a video talking about the best places that you should be spending your gems here in rise of kingdoms and the number one thing that you guys requested was okay now tell us how to get gems for free so today we're gonna go over all the different ways that i know of that you can get gems for free and i just want to warn you up front that this gets really really grindy it gets so grindy in fact that you might actually think it is not even possible to get over 2000 gems a day but i can guarantee you that i know multiple free-to-play players that pull this off and if that level of grinding is something that you like to do and find fulfilling then this is the video for you but first what's going on guys cheers okay let's just jump right into this and we're going to start off with the easiest and most obvious places that you can be getting gems and the first thing that comes to mind is the daily objectives okay you get 100 gems here every single day that's 700 gems per week or 2800 gems per month and look i know that that's not a lot of gems but it is free and it does add up over time especially because you're getting a bunch of other things for doing the dailies anyway there's no excuse to not do this next we have to talk about arc of Osiris. Cyrus. Now, this is actually a really consistent way for you to get a nice chunk of gems every single time that this comes around. Now, the thing about Ark of Osiris is that they're actually quite generous with the amount of gems that you get, even if you don't win. But the catch is depending on the power of your alliance, you're either in the golden battlefield or in the silver battlefield. Now, the silver battlefield still gives you legendary commander sculptures, so it's still absolutely worth doing. But if you can get into a golden battlefield alliance and do Ark of Osiris every time it comes around, well, if you win just by being being in the alliance you get 500 gems if you lose you get 200 but your individual score is really where you're going to get a nice chunk of gems here because if you win and get over 10,000 points which is definitely possible for most players as long as you're actually playing the game mode you can get 2,000 gems here which is actually crazy and even if you get over 6,000 it's still a thousand gems and if you lose it's it's less but it's still free this is a really nice chunk of gems that you can get every single time Ark of Osiris comes around so I highly recommend doing this there's very few events in the game that are this generous with free gems besides Ark of Osiris there are other events that come around periodically that will give you some amount of gems as a reward for example this is the tiles and bricks event obviously this is a screenshot but this is just an example of some of the types of events that come around this one is specifically for building power and I would say that if you are in a much older kingdom uh this type of event you don't really see that often because most players have maxed out buildings anyway and that would just be them giving free gems to everyone in the kingdom it would be nice but for me like for example i don't think i've seen tiles and bricks in a while but for younger kingdoms i'm sure that this comes around a bit more frequently but there's other events in the game like training day or events where you're going to just get points for increasing your power whether that's regardless of research building troop training whatever there's a bunch of these little events and yes of course you get the most amount of gems by coming in first place but even if you can find yourself in like the top 50 just squeeze in the top 50 or maybe squeeze in the top 30 or something like that typically you can get like 100 gems or you know just a handful of gems for a very low amount of effort right because most of the time for these events people either shoot for like the top two or they don't participate at all and so if you see the event where like sure okay you're not going to take first place but once it's clear who's going to take first and second pretty much everybody else just doesn't even participate because the rewards aren't really worth it so that's where you as a free-to-play player for a very small amount of training could possibly snag yourself a couple of hundred gems for free because for everybody else it's not even worth participating in that event this also is the case for things like strategic reserve for example there's plenty of other events where if you just go through and you pay attention you'll see there's a lot of different events that give you a small amount of gems if you can just place a decent rank so always come into the event calendar okay and check the upcoming events to see like what rewards could you possibly get here okay if you guys didn't know the event calendar tells you what rewards you can get 
which is really really nice but you can see here for the Halloween event there really aren't any raw gems that you can get but you can get a lot of Halloween specific events which you can turn into you know legendary commander sculptures and stuff like that so always pay attention to this stuff even the mightiest governor for example if you can squeeze your way into the top 50 right you get 60 gems and again like this doesn't sound like a lot because it's not but it adds up over time if you do this every mightiest governor and every time a small event comes around where you can get 50 gems 100 gems whatever right like if you're overall top 50 for mightiest governor you get 200 gems so trust me it definitely adds up over time okay next I'm going to give you guys a couple of quick tips that maybe you didn't actually know and these are actually free gems now I talked about how the Halloween event here and you could really replace this with any event Christmas New Year's whatever but you'll see here that they're really there's no way to get free gems here but they're kind of is because you'll see in my city that there are some decorations specific to any given holiday and the way that you get these decorations is from the events that happen every single time that holiday comes around and here you could see that I can exchange a hundred jack-o-lanterns for a Halloween decoration voucher now if you look here it says that I already own both of these there's one of them that I don't own but the other thing you'll notice is that it says if you already have all the themes this will be exchanged for 200 gems so you have to make the value judgment here right because obviously you know you're mainly going to go for the legendary commander sculptures and the material choice chests and things like that but let's say that the event is about to end and you have no way of getting more of these witches hats as free to play and you, you basically can't get any of the premium stuff but you have some of the jack-o-lanterns left over would you rather get five gold keys or 200 gems I mean for some people they'd prefer the gold keys there's commanders in there that you care about but some people might just prefer the gems but it doesn't end there because there's also the seven day city theme and this is actually a fun little trick that I didn't even know if you come into your inventory you're actually going to see a lot of different three day or seven day city skin items in your other category you're going to see here that the fireworks city theme this is the permanent version and I actually already have this city skin you can see it right here I can I can apply it right now if I wanted to and boom there we go so now what happens if I use this item for a permanent city skin that I already have the skin for well let's find out boom 2000 gems baby let's go but the best part about this is that you can do this with the temporary city skins if you already have the permanent version so here you have the dragon boat wish and I already have the permanent version of this so if I use a three day version of it boom I get 50 gems and I could do it again and boom I get 50 gems what about the seven day city skins so if I use this boom I get a hundred gems I use another one boom I get a hundred gems so no matter what you have in here like this circus of colors I had six of them so boom there we go we get a bunch of gems for these temporary city skins it's actually not doing anything keeping these in your inventory you might as well exchange these for free gems but just make sure that you actually have the permanent version of this otherwise you're probably just going to go in and waste this okay you don't want to do that that is a very free and cheap and instant way to get a bunch of gems I just got thousands of gems right there for free another literally free way to get gems is by using redeem codes okay this is one that I was sent this morning it's called rock command and and basically you come into your settings you come all the way down here to other and then you click redeem and you basically paste that code now there's not always new gift codes okay sometimes there are sometimes there aren't so you have to be following rise of kingdoms on their official social media channels so they're all going to be linked down below you can follow them on like Facebook Twitter Instagram all that stuff typically they will post um, free gift codes periodically over there and the rewards that you get from these really depend it varies a lot sometimes it's like silver keys right it's something that doesn't really matter but sometimes you get something like this where you get 200 gems for free a gold key and some amount of resources this is really nice 200 gems I mean like that's literally free so always keep your eye open for new redeem codes next up let's talk about another place that you can literally get gems for free and this doesn't require that you do anything and this is from the rare chests in your Alliance so as you can see here I was given 15 gems for free 20 gems for free just because an Alliance member went through and bought a few bundles in the shop okay 20 gems I didn't do anything okay and you can scroll through here and there's a bunch of different instances where I'm getting some amount of gems for free and this adds up guys it really does this is in the past day or so maybe 24 hours 48 hours if you scroll through here you're gonna see tons of different places 
where I'm getting gems for free. And even if it's five or 10 at a time, again, that's still going to add up to a few hundred gems per day, which is really, really nice. Now, this is assuming that there are people in your alliance who are making purchases. And of course you don't have control over that. You can't force people to spend money, but uh, you can try to get yourself into a top alliance in your kingdom. And typically the top alliances are where there's going to be some amount of spenders. Okay. Whether they're small spenders or mega whales, like obviously if you're in, you know, 1960, uh, pretty much any alliance there is going to have, you know, gold chests every single day, right? There's always going to be somebody in your server who's probably going to spend a little bit of money maybe not every day but the highest probability of getting rewards from that spend is by being in their alliance so if you are 100 free to play how can you land yourself in an alliance that is really active with people who are spending money well you might think that it's impossible right because the whales like to stick together and of course that is technically true but you have to remember that like an alliance at any given time can hold over 150 people and typically there's not 150 whales in, a, in, a, in, in any given alliance right now of course there are exceptions surely but usually an alliance would rather have a hyper active free-to-play player than a generally unactive low spender right i mean it it just it makes sense so there are definitely areas of opportunity for you as a free-to-play player to make yourself valuable okay how can you make yourself valuable to a, a spending alliance if you yourself are not spending well like i said before you could be very active and by being very active if you are very knowledgeable about the game you can be a resource to those players okay they may even trust you to be an r4 in that alliance or maybe they run the kingdom and they want you to give out titles okay you're going to be online you're going to hand out titles to players that are asking for it in the kingdom chat alliances often need r force to be online to put down the new alliance mother load every time that it gets fully gathered right so there's lots of little chores i guess you could say that you know free to play players can offer to an alliance that they they can do a lot of times if somebody is a big whale in the game they're whaling because they don't have time to spend you know five ten hours a day on rise of kingdoms but if you're maybe a student who doesn't you know really have that many things that require their immediate attention all day you could kind of just leave your phone on with the rise of kingdoms running and and like you can be that person that's always online or speaking of alliance mother loads okay you can have as a free-to-play player multiple farm accounts which we're going to talk about a little bit more later because it's very relevant for this video but if you're a free-to-play player who has tons of active farms you can donate a lot of excess resources that you have to these wells during wartime and for them, that's going to be worth it. They're going to want you around because you can help fund their hospital bills, right? Their hospital bills are going to be much higher than yours because they're going to be running around with seven armies. Okay. And they're going to be fighting constantly. Whereas as a free to play player, you know, sure you're going to be fighting a lot and you have to have enough resources for your own hospital, but it's possible that you could have extra resources to donate to a war. And that is valuable. No matter how much you're spending, whether you're a free to play player or whether you're a whale needing gold is needing gold. Okay. And that's something that you can do with multiple farm accounts for free. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can provide value to a spending alliance to get you in the door and start collecting some of these you know chests every single day especially like during the off season right like if you're not in kvk you might be able to reach out to some alliance leaders and say hey do you mind if i just keep my main account in your alliance you know taking up just one alliance slot so i can collect some of those chests and help out better during war it's really going to come down to diplomacy and you know how well you get along with your kingdom and hopefully uh you can you know strike some sort of deal and get yourself in a decent spending alliance okay another good way to get gems for free is by chaining barbarians okay and what i mean by this is when you attack a barbarian and you have a commander in that army that does aoe damage hopefully it's ysg or it's juge leong or maybe it's heraclius right there's a couple of different commanders in the game that have circular aoe and if you have none of them you can use ethel fledge she has half circle it's not as good but it's close and it's free one of the things that you can do is get barbarian kills for free and by that i mean not spending ap so you can see here attacking this level 22 has a chance to get me 30 gems which is nice but it does cost some amount of ap so this is 50 ap this level 12 has a chance of giving 20 gems and guess what this also costs 50 so you're better off attacking level 22 but if we're close enough to the level 12 one thing you're, that you're going to notice is when my secondary commander uses his active skill which is a circular aoe he's going to be able to hit this level 12 
and it's going to probably kill it instantly yes instant kill right there okay I killed that level 12 at no additional cost to me I didn't use any AP points to kill him but it does count as an additional barbarian kill so if we come in here to the battle report you'll see that the level 22 I didn't get any gems from unfortunately and the level 12 I also didn't get any gems from but the point that I'm making here is that I basically had an additional chance at getting gems for the same 50 AP right I didn't spend 100 AP I spent only 50 and I basically doubled my chances of getting some amount of gems now the cool part about this is that if your city is in you know this near the center of your home kingdom map where the lost temple actually is there are going to be no barbarians that naturally spawn uh under like level you know I think like 18 or something like that what that means is um if you go in and you try to find a level 12 barbarian and there isn't one because they don't spawn there the game will actually spawn one near your city right away and that's how I got this level 12 here that's how I got this level 11 and this level 10. now if an actual barbarian spawns around here like let's say this level 25 barbarian was right here then I could attack him with the same strategy that I just showed you okay and I could get the value from the level 25 and I could also instantly kill the level 10 and the level 11 they're a little bit spread out here but you know typically you could kind of wiggle around you could like get a little bit closer to one get a little bit closer to the other right and you don't have to use a full army for this if you want to kill something a little bit slower of course this is kind of a, a free way where you can spawn in these barbs that you can instantly kill and you get a chance at 10 20 maybe 30 gems okay which is really really nice look at that as we're talking the level 21 spawns in okay so i can come over here i can start attacking him and now i can start to retreat a little bit i want to pull him uh, i kind of want to leash him a little bit over here closer to these other barbarians and hopefully i can uh i can get at least one of these others while we're fighting over here okay are we gonna get one oh Oh, we got one okay we didn't get the other one obviously I could have moved down and, and and maybe gotten the other one but you get the point now of course you can chain actual barbarians that spawn in the open field and by doing this I can attack one of these barbarians and my AoE for my secondary commander can initiate the fight with the other one and this is a really great way to get free value because you know unlike the, the lower level barbs these have the full rewards here but this becomes even more valuable in the lost kingdom if you are in kvk you're gonna have level 40 level 50 plus barbarians which are much harder to defeat but they give you way more rewards okay you're gonna get 50 60 70 sometimes even more gems from a single kill from those they do cost more AP to attack but it's a higher cost higher reward so that means that you're gonna get even more free rewards as well from that chaining effect so always 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 if you're a free-to-play player always be trying to chain barbarians always try to fight close by you know so you could pull one barbarian into your fight and you're going to effectively double your chances or triple your chances at getting those free rewards without spending your ap for those wondering i did get 30 gems from the level 21 and i did not get gems from the level 11 that i just hit now another place that you can spend your ap instead of on kvk barbarians which is a great place to do it is on marauders now these this is the pre kvk event and the marauders are a great source of a variety of rewards not just gems but if you want to take things to the absolute extreme and be an absolute mad lad about killing marauders okay i actually posted a video back in april of uh, one of my alliance members rk shout out to rk if you're watching he spent 400 000 ap during a single marauders event and got over a thousand of the chests here and i did a breakdown of basically everything that he got here so if you guys missed this video a few months ago uh, i would definitely recommend checking it out but from all of that stuff you could see that he got forty six thousand gems from two days worth of grinding okay and that's on top of all of the other speed ups the materials that he got and all these other things again i'm not going to go over all this right now um if you missed the video go ahead and check it out i basically take all of his rewards and break it down in a uh, in a spreadsheet and you know i think that marauders is a great source to spend your ap and it's absolutely worth mentioning in this video because as you saw you can get tens of thousands of gems by grinding away and getting other rewards at the same time okay now let's talk about actually farming gems because this is something that you can do in rise of kingdoms you can actually find gems out in the world and you can farm them with your gathering commanders okay and this is actually a practice that a lot of people do 
and it's really grindy it is super grindy you basically have to be online all day in order to get the maximum value out of this but this is a free source of potentially thousands of gems in a single day now how does this actually work and how can you get the best value out of your gem farming time okay well first of all I have a couple of tips um the only way to find gem nodes is by actually looking for them manually which is really unfortunate okay so I recommend basically just zooming out and just looking for the little white uh gem icon you kind of have to like wait a second see if you can find it and boom there's one here's a level two okay so this is actually even better I know you can find level one and two in home kingdom you might be able to find level three if not uh you could find level three in uh kbk and that's definitely a better place to do this but essentially what you want to do here is you find a gem deposit okay and for me I actually did this earlier I tested this out and it takes 46 seconds per gem farm okay so that means this is like a little over 15 minutes to actually farm this but you also have to take into account the actual March speed okay so the amount of time it takes to get there so I would say you know probably every like 18 to 25 minutes you have to check in on your phone and check in or on your desktop to see are your gatherers done because the way that this works is first of all you always 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 want to send commanders that give you a bonus to your gathering resources okay so there's three commanders that do this there's Sunduk. now you have to expertise her so this is the one that you're least likely to have of course then there's Matilda you could see her expertise 10 more resources and finally we also have bay right here we have constance and her fourth skill gives you 10 resources so you always want to send two commanders that both give that 10 for an additional 20 of resources upon completion eventually you're also going to want to get the four piece forest guardian set for this specifically because this is going to give you i mean obviously this is just a great set for gathering but you get five percent extra resources when you have the four piece set bonus on top of this if you come into the talents for gathering okay you're going to see over here that the more the better is a talent that gives you six percent additional resources okay so in total if you've been paying attention that means you get 20 from the commanders and 11 from the talent and the gear so that's 31 percent extra resources when you actually finish gathering a specific node and if we jump into my gathering report here you could see that when i gathered a, a level one gem node i got 13 gems okay so 30 percent more gems is crucial like if you're going to farm gems you absolutely need to do that you need 30 percent more that is going to make it even more worth it to you but the best way to do this is obviously find a gem node go ahead and send out the gatherers that you want to send and instead of sending the minimum required right because we only need a load of 21 instead of sending the minimum of tier one you're going to send basically the maximum okay send a full amount of tier one units and this is only 8200 load right so that's just how heavy gems are i guess and essentially what you're going to do here and it's it's important that you use tier one because tier one have the fastest march speed if you guys didn't know time is gems in this scenario remember so you're going to send out a max army of tier one siege to that gem node okay they're going to farm that that gem node and then once they complete this they're actually going to start walking back to your city just like with any other farming node right but you don't want that to happen because that's a waste of time you are trying to go from gem node to gem node and gather as many gems as possible so basically uh you have to see okay where is the next gem node that i'm going to go to so perhaps we go to this one first right we grab all the gems here then let's say in 15 16 minutes i check my phone and boom sunduk is done instead of having her walk back to my 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 city I'm actually going to instantly send her from that gem node to this gem node and that's how you're going to do it every 15 to 20 minutes you're going to check your phone and you're going to see okay they're done with that node where do I send them next and basically um you just want to send them from gem node to gem node and never return back to your city because returning back to your city again it's a waste of time it's a few minutes to walk back realistically over time there's going to be fewer and fewer gem nodes in your city you're going to have to go farther and farther away from your city to find the next gem node because they only spawn in at certain times so assuming that nobody else in your kingdom is doing this the radius to your city is going to be is something that you consider right and so it's super grindy and you have to be online basically all day to get the maximum amount of gems from this but 
it is possible to do and i've seen people farm like 2000 gems in a single day by doing this method now here's the thing about farming gems because it comes with a catch obviously the first catch is it takes all day right uh, the second catch is that if you're spending a lot of time farming gems then you're not spending time farming resources so food wood stone and gold which you need all of those things to actually fight in rise of kingdom so if you want to be a gem farmer then you have to have farm accounts for example my mini omni arc account here you have to have a second ideally a third or fourth farm account that you log into and those accounts are going to be responsible for farming your gold your stone your food and your wood and basically those resources are going to be funneled to your main account because gems cannot be transferred obviously i can't send you gems right so your main account has to be the one that farms the gems so your farm accounts have to supplement that time with actual resources so it's it's quite grindy it's very tedious but a lot of free-to-play players actually do this not every day but occasionally you know if you have some free time you know while you're maybe chaining barbarians you can send out an army and just gather a bunch of gems you know get a couple hundred gems in a single day and you're, you're chilling right and if you do all of those things that we talked about in this video on average you can get over 2000 or 2500 gems in a day right some days are going to be better than others depending on what events are around and and how close you are to gym nodes and how much time you have to actually farm gems and how lucky you get with the barbarian drop rate right of course so some days are going to be better than others but on average you know if you're mega 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 grindy you can get get over 2000 or 2500 gems per day and all of that is 100 free to play it only takes your time which i mean guys if we're talking about a full day's worth of grinding let's say you spend all day grinding and you get 2500 gems okay that is two daily special offers so that's ten dollars so 10 us dollars will get you 2400 gems here okay you got to think about okay how many hours if you spend 10 hours to get ten dollars worth of gems that's a dollar an hour right so if there's something that you can be doing that makes you more than a dollar an hour you probably should be doing that besides grinding gems okay now that we've talked about all of the ways to get gems 100 free to play let's talk about some ways that you can get more gems from the purchases that you might be making okay so this part of the video is for those people that are spending a little bit of money i have four little quick tips here to maximize the amount of gems that you can get from making purchases in rise of kingdoms now the first one and this is kind of the latest uh, method to do this is called pluto mall okay this is actually officially a, a partnership with rise of kingdoms with lilith games and you can go to this website it's plutomall.com slash rok and you can make a purchase for a flux script and when you do that you will be credited with a flux script in game and you can exchange it for a bundle but the reason that this gets you gems for free is because let's just look at the 100 value here okay if you spend a hundred dollars here then you're gonna get a flux script seven okay the names are a little confusing here i wish they would have used like you know bronze silver gold something like that but anyway the flux script seven will be given to you in game and you can exchange it for a 100 bundle so effectively it's an equal exchange because you're spending a hundred dollars and you're getting a 100 bundle but you'll see that when you make the purchase you will also gain a flux script for for free and if we take a look here a flux script four is a ten dollar bundle so effectively you can get for one hundred dollars you can get a one hundred dollar bundle and a ten dollar bundle that comes at no additional cost to you because it's the same price as the one hundred dollar bundle so effectively you get a free ten dollar bundle and that's free gems there's two thousand two hundred gems for free just by buying the flux scripts instead of buying the bundles in the actual in-game shop the second way that you can get additional gems for free is from Google Play points okay if you play rise of kingdoms on an Android device or on an emulator that uses the Google Play Store then when you make purchases using your Google Play account you accumulate points over time and it's a pretty slow accumulation but sometimes they run events where if you spend a certain amount in a day you get double triple whatever 10x the amount of points which is great and then you can exchange these play points 
for Google Play gift cards. So you can, you know, after you gain, you know, let's say 500 Google Play points can be exchanged for $5 worth of in-game purchases. So by making the purchases that you were normally going to make anyway through the Google Play Store, you can accumulate those points and then get five dollars worth of value in game now the cool part about google play points is that if you exchange it for just balance on your account like let's say you get five dollars to spend on google play on the google play store if you want to buy let's say a twenty dollar bundle in rise of kingdoms it will actually use your play point voucher first and then charge your card the rest so instead of needing to buy a five dollar bundle you could buy a $20 bundle. You'll just pay $15 for it. So you save five bucks. So this is another cool way to get a little bit more extra value from the purchases that you might be already making. The third way that you can get some free bundles in rise of kingdoms is through credit card reward points. Now I'm using chase as an example here, but I know that plenty of other credit card companies have a reward point system. And one of the cool things is that this strategy kind of actually stacks with the other things that we've talked about like the pluto mall and like a google play store if you buy your bundles on rise of kingdoms through your credit card instead of a debit card for example you will get typically depending on your bank some amount of points for those purchases whether it's 1.5 x cash back or you know 2x 5x whatever you can exchange those points eventually for gift cards and this means you can either get like an Apple app store gift card or a Google play gift card, right? With these points that you're accumulating, not for free, but essentially it's just an additional value you get from spending through the credit card. Right. And I've actually done this in the past where I've, I've gotten hundreds of dollars worth of uh, gift cards for free because of purchases that I have made with those cards. Right. And as long as you're spending responsibly and paying down your credit cards, this is basically free extra value. Now, of course, there's other things you could use these points for like traveling and dining and stuff like that. But if you're not going to do any of that stuff and you really want to fund your rise of kingdoms addiction, then here you go. Free gift cards for the purchases that you're already going to be making. And finally, the last way that you can get a little bit of extra value and free gems out of the purchases that you're already making is by buying Google play gift cards or Apple app store gift cards at a discounted rate. Now this is not that common. Okay. Sometimes this comes around typically around the holidays, maybe black Friday, Christmas, new year's, whatever. Occasionally it will come around where target best buy Walmart, Amazon, they might sell a $100 Google play gift card for $90. I've seen them go down to $85 through things like Costco and Sam's club, things like that, where you actually need a membership to get it. But you know, if you get a $100 gift card for $90, well, then you're only spending $90 to get hundred dollars worth of value. So it's actually 10% better value to buy that gift card at a discount rather than just buy the bundles in the game. So between this and all the other different ways that I just mentioned, there's a bunch of different ways to get additional bundles or cheaper bundles in rise of kingdoms, which effectively means more gems for the same amount of money that you're spending. Anyway, guys, those are all the different ways that I know of to get gems for free and also to get free additional gems if you're making purchases in the game and if you found this video useful drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comments down below your thoughts on the different methods we talked about in this video did you learn anything new here or did you know all of this stuff do you think that farming gems is actually worth it and chaining barbarians is it actually worth it let me know in the comment section below and of course if I missed any free methods of getting gems I would love to hear from you down there as well and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace